Are you a mouth breather? Would you like to learn how to breathe through your nose? Today's live is all about nose breathing and giving you tips about nose breathing, but more specifically, talking about why nose breathing is so problematic for most people. So before we talk about the natural way of breathing, which is through your nose, let's talk about what can actually prevent us from breathing through our nose. You see, there are, we actually take for granted the way that our jaw, our teeth and our tongue develop. The first thing that I need you to consider is at the moment of birth, our teeth are not present. And the first thing that we learn to do is we learn to swallow the milk. So in essence, we're using our tongue to swallow food, but also we are normally, we should breathe through our nose. This is the physiological way of thinking. Breathing through the nose actually helps us calm ourselves down. It decreases inflammation. Uh, it decreases inflammation in our entire body and it actually helps us with stress. So there are three main causes of things that can prevent you from breathing through your nose. Um, the common thing that we see is the fact that the sinuses are blocked. Now, it, it is true that a deviated septum can also a deviated septum, this is the part in your nose over here that is deviated, that can block or make it difficult for you to breathe through your nose. However, most cases, cases of mouth breathing and septum or sinuses that are blocked are involved in allergies to food or it may be something that you're actually eating that is uh, causing your nose to be blocked. So you might want to you might want to take a look and and you know revise your your diet. So a nasal, a nasal septum or allergies can prevent us or make it challenging for us to breathe through our nose. However, the position of our tongue, if we actually take a look at how our tongue posture is, and very often when we're talking about the jaw, we refer to this entire component as the stomatognatic system. That is anything that involves the development of that specific organ. In this case, today we're talking about the jaw. And a normal physiological tongue posture should not be at the bottom of the mandible, which is the lower bone, but should certainly sit on top of the maxillary, which is this bone right here. So what can prevent this mechanism from happening? I'm going to bring about the fact that we are stressed and the fact that we are clenching our teeth. If you are stressed, you are clenching your teeth. I'm not talking about physiological clenching when you sleep. I'm talking about clenching throughout the day. And most people who are clenchers don't think that they clench their teeth throughout the day. So it's really important that you figure out whether or not you are a clencher because how is this involved with, uh, how does this relate to nose breathing? Well, when you're clenching your teeth, what you're, what you're actually doing, let me show this from the side. You see this height right important? Well, because the moment that this mechanism changes, so in other words, the minute that you lose height, in this example through clenching, this will end up changing the actual position of forward head posture. And that is going to make it difficult for you to take in oxygen. It's going to affect the mechanics of your cervical spine and it's going to push your head forward. So a problem that starts with stress may cause you to wear out your teeth prematurely. And this, uh, this reality will change the mechanics of your temporal mandibular joint. And there are studies that have, uh, that have been done on this when the mechanics of the temporal mandibular joint changes, the head moves forward. So this is how clenching can potentially promote mouth breathing as opposed to nasal breathing. So a deviated septum would be the first cause along with allergies or food allergies. The second cause may be stress. Stress leads to clenching. Clenching diminishes vertical dimension, pushes your head forward and you open your mouth to basically grasp air. Now, who is, um, what is the, the biggest uh, or more most functional organ, or I should say muscle in the jaw? The tongue. And very often the tongue is the culprit. 
and uh, the tongue is innervated by the 12th cranial nerve and the functions of the tongue develop in a specific sequence. The same way that we learn how to walk in a specific sequence, guys, remember, we don't walk at birth because we need to go through specific steps to activate our brain so we can activate those parts of our brain that gives us symmetry and synergy between our, uh, our anterior muscles and our posterior muscles so that we can actually stabilize our body in space. There also is a specific sequence when it comes to tongue development. When we're born, we don't actually have teeth. So what's going to form the entire development of what is called the stomatognatic system first and foremost at birth is going to be breastfeeding breastfeeding so you need to find a way if you're a mother if you have a newborn baby to breastfeed as much as possible and as long as possible so that your baby may have all the chances on their side to develop a proper occlusion very shortly teeth start to erupt and the ink Entire mechanics of the mouth now starts to change and through this change that we start to see different uh, tongue posture and very very often some adults still have what we call a, a lingual dysfunction or a propulsion of the tongue when they talk or when they eat so in other words their tongue is unable to rest at the top of their palate so I know what you're gonna tell me. You're going to tell me that you're not a clencher. You're gonna tell me that your tongue is on your palate all the time. So for this, there's one simple test uh, that I recommend to do. You're gonna go buy some red dots just like this. You're gonna grab one. At the level of your eyes, you're gonna position one in each room in six different areas, a kitchen, bathroom, work area, whatever. The point is, is when you see this dot, I want you to pause for a second, take a moment, and become aware of whether or not your teeth presently are in contact. So when I'm referring to clenching, I just wanna specify, this is not massive grinding. There is grinding, this is called bruxism, but what I'm referring to is just contact. Contact, even chewing gum all day long, is clenching. Why is this a problem? We have a beautiful picture here of our trigeminal nerve. And you see how the roots here are coming at the bottom of the teeth? That information makes it to the trigeminal nerve right here and projects onto your entire brain. We clench our teeth when we are stressed. The problem is, is that the trigeminal nerve also communicates with other brain parts that affect your sympathetic tone, your stress level, your digestion, your ability to manage your stress, your oxygen um, uh, consumption. And it also, in this example, has an effect on your lower jaw, which is going to affect your head posture, which is going to affect your posture. So everything is related. And it's really important, the more, the more you have an understanding between all of those sensory organs and the clinical contexts that you're seeing in your practice, the more things are gonna start making sense. And the more you're gonna start realizing that by working on all of these different sensory organs simultaneously, this will give you the ability to be able to resolve a lot of the symptoms that we see clinically. So going back to the teeth, what ends up happening is that there's three types of occlusion. If the tongue, if tongue posture is not at the top of the palate sitting just like this and the best way to evoke this physiological posture is by doing this sound please try to do this with me can you do this see my tongue all right so right before the sound right before the sound i want you guys to feel or to become aware of how your tongue positions itself in the palate it actually flattens right out pretend my fingers are or my tongue flattens right out and normally you shouldn't have any contact with your teeth. So if this is true, then you would develop what dentists refer to as a class one occlusion. What is that? Well, that is the proper development of your teeth. Your teeth are properly aligned. There is enough space. Your maxillary is properly expanded. Your lower jaw sits right under your upper jaw, meaning that all of the lower teeth are inside the upper teeth. You do not have a crossbite. And if this reality is true, then your condyle, your temporal mandibular joint is going to be in its physiological position. It's 
going to give you symmetry with your head posture, which will stabilize your shoulders, which will go all the way down to your sacrum and your pelvis and will project right in between both of your feet. So in other words, you're going to be a really steady individual. And this is a class one occlusion. Now, if the functions of the tongue are not properly developed, if you sucked your thumb, for example, when you speak, if you have a thrust, that pushes the tongue forward all the time. You could start seeing that the teeth in the front start moving, flaring out. And this is referred to as a class two division one occlusion. This is when you look at the teeth from the side. If it's a class two, the mandible is going to move back. There's going to be space under here. And in a division one, you will see the teeth that are flaring out. The common way to correct this is through braces. However, you can have an impact on the teeth if you address tongue posture. Number two is a class two division two, which is exactly the same biomechanical scenario. But in this event, instead of the teeth being flared out, they're going to be inclined inwards. And this position is going to keep the mandible in its pathological position, which is condyle moves up and back head moves forward which promotes mouth breathing. And last but not least, a class three occlusion is just the opposite, is when the lower jaw moves forward. And at this point, the mandible has developed a little bit quicker or faster as opposed to the maxillary, which is the upper teeth. And you end up having what dentists refer to as a class three occlusion. All of this could potentially affect mouth breathing. So just like posture, if you've acquired habits in your mouth with your tongue to function in a certain fashion, it's going to be very hard through conscious thought. It's possible, but it's very challenging. It's very costly in time to change those habits. This is something that you have to work at for your entire life. The thing is, is that muscle function uh, happens in exactly the same fashion, whether we're talking about your bicep, your erector spinae, or in this example, your tongue. If you send feedback to those muscles, if you uh, help them contract in a different way through different devices that are providing 24 hour stimulation, it's always going to help you get there a little faster. So for posture, we suggest our postural insoles and we've done videos about that that explain why they work and we'll put the description below but for the tongue you may want to consider different means or ways of addressing tongue posture certainly doing this exercise will help when you catch yourself looking at those red dots right you will then become aware in this moment of whether or not your teeth are touching if they are and they will be you will put your tongue on your palate, close your lips. You need to have a lip seal, that's physiological, and breathe for one minute. By doing this, you're going to start to become aware of your clenching habits. You're gonna give your body a break as far as uh, your neck posture and your posture. You're also going to promote the production of nitric oxide, which is super massively anti-inflammatory. That's important because you want to be able to fight off um, uh, chronic stress and infections if, if need be. And uh, if you want to uh, address your tongue posture, posture on a more, um, uh, on a longer level, we do suggest different, we work with different appliances that we've had them actually designed to specifically address tongue posture. We compare them to other, other devices that are on the market uh, that you can get for $50. These devices still have, do have holes inside of them that still promotes mouth breathing. Um, the plastic that they use uh, may be toxic. I don't know. I have not uh, fully looked into, into the design of their bisphenol A um, uh, free, but the appliances that we uh, propose are the ones that actually do promote nose breathing. There's no hole in them. When you put your teeth in them, uh, your tongue here, and that's the magic, your tongue over here is going to rest here and it's going to force you very gently to put your tongue up on your palate and certainly when you sleep. So this could be a great tool that you can train with. It also increases VO2 max and uh, it tames down sympathetic stress. So as a recap, the three things that can promote mouth breathing is improper occlusion. The cause of improper occlusion is what? 
the tongue. We're not born with improper occlusion. We develop it through the use of our tongue. So the tongue is the culprit and that is the thing that needs to be looked at when we're talking about improper occlusion. If you have a deviated septum, there's not much that we can do about that. Uh, you're gonna have to find strategies to be able to uh, promote nasal breathing as best as you can. So breathing exercises through the nostrils can also help. Um, allergies can also block your sinuses, prevent you from breathing through your nose. If you are stressed, you are clenching your teeth. If you're clenching your teeth, you're diminishing the height of your teeth. The more the height diminishes, the more your mandible, which is the lower bone, moves back. The more this bone moves back, the more the head moves forward and blocks your oxygen. So you will open your mouth to take in some air. So these are really the uh, three major things that can affect nose breathing. The best way to promote uh, proper breathing patterns is to address your tongue. There's tons of ways that you can do it. You can even train with water in your mouth. That's awesome. Uh, if you don't have time to do that and you wanna give it a notch, uh, uh, another um, uh, component to train the tongue, all day long as best as much as you can when you're working on your computer then you may want to consider uh, looking into our functional activator you can use um, uh, our vagal activator which is more affordable as far as creating stimulation for the trigeminal nerve but remember that the number one thing you need to figure out is whether or not you are clenching your teeth and you have to change your habits that's one thing that's that we can't go by you have to change your jaw habits and uh last but not least i'm looking at um uh at some notes and some points that i put here for you guys um your tongue posture like we said is going to have the greatest impact on your head posture which can also have an impact on your entire posture. So I hope that this makes sense. Uh, let me know if uh, the red dots have helped. This is definitely something that you can do. We've made videos about this in the past and I'll put the links in the description be below. You can find them on our YouTube channel as well. The red dots work beautifully as far as becoming aware of clenching patterns. Once you become aware of it, it's your job to start changing it. Let me know if that worked for you. If you know anybody that snores or has sleep apnea or is stressed or clenches their teeth or would like to promote uh, nasal breathing, please forward this video to them. And on that note, have a super Sunday, guys. Be good.